Welcome, all you business geeks, to the Business Geeks Podcast, an entrepreneurial show where three friends geek out loud and proud on everybody's business. I'm Super Joe Pardo of superjoepardo.com and indiepodcasters.com. I'm joined by my two wonderful co-hosts, Jennifer Crawford, the co-founder of Sparent.co and Samantha Riley of SamanthaRiley.global. This week, we are talking about elevator pitches, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, and everything in between. Uh, I have some, uh, you know, some examples of of what not to do because I've done, I've made those mistakes myself, and uh, and I'm hoping that my uh, two co-hosts here can can help uh, fill in the blanks uh, with some of their examples or examples that they've heard, uh, or just point out why mine was terrible. And and as I already know, uh, that they they are they are terrible. Um, so, uh, Jen, how how are you doing this uh, this week? I'm fine and dandy. Thank you, you for uh, asking. Are, are we are we are we celebrating Halloween down in DC this year? Is that is that a thing, or they did they cancel it there? Um, I, I guess it depends on who you ask. I think they're just being creative with it. You know, okay. doing doing things uh, in a way that that's more safe for everybody involved. So, you know, we're an adaptable race. You know, human race is an adaptable thing. We'll, we'll <laughs> we, you can't take away our Halloween that easily. <laughs> we yeah, we right. will find a way to get the candy. We will find a way. <laughs> uh, Sam, is is Halloween a thing down in Australia? I don't know if I've ever asked. Uh, not really. Like we do it a little bit, but it's not a huge thing. I wish it was. It's so it's so fun. It is fun. Mm. Uh, it, it is, especially especially with kids. Uh, you know, getting to see them all all dressed up and all. They uh they haven't canceled Halloween here. Uh, fortunately, uh, but it, there's there's definitely some regulations that they're trying to impose, which I, I kind of understand. I mean, you're putting up a bunch of people walking up to, to houses and like ringing on doorbells and getting all you know n- narrow walkways that you're walking past other people. So like, I I get it, I get it. It's you know we got to be careful, be careful out there, people. Mm-hmm. Um, so happy Halloween to everybody since, uh, next time we, we talk, it'll be November already of 2020. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to give some crazy, Almost crazy, over. <laughs> almost over. Um, uh, before, before I get started though, uh, I was talking with one of our, uh, avid listeners, Brent Basham, uh, right, literally like up to about 20 minutes ago. And uh, he he was talking about how much he absolutely loves our show here. So what? thank you, Brent. Oh, for thanks, that. Brent. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. And and how much he, he enjoys uh, our opinions and our uh, banter back and forth and and all of that that comes along with it. So wow. thank you very much, Brent. Well, thank you. I don't. Well, oh, and he's he's here. <laughs> oh, and, and, yeah, and he, just like <laughs> boom. Boom. We, he's like a wizard. You summon him and he shows up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was good. It was good for us to, uh, to you know, for me and him to ca- get to catch up because we hadn't caught up in a while. And, uh, and, and you know, he, he's, he was apologizing because he's like, I don't get to listen to every single episode uh, live, which I want to. Uh, but, I, I, you know, he has other me- uh, meetings and things scheduled <laughs> around the five o'clock. Pe- well. <laughs> Hang on. People have lives? People? People yeah, have right. Lied? Outside of listening to the business keys, it's it's, it's wow. horrible. I don't know what they're wow. thinking. It's okay. it's okay, Brent. You can't be the president of the fan club, but you might be able to be the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, good to I, know. Good to know. I don't know about this topic, Joe. Why? What's what's what's, what's wrong with you? Can I just say I'm not even sure, <clears throat> like. Do we need an ele- like? Tell me, uh, tell me what you think an elevator pitch is, because and I'll okay. tell you why I'm confused by them. Okay, Jen, mm. what do you do? I own a business. Are you wanting me to do an ele- elevator pitch on the oh, fly? Oh, yeah, no, elevator pitches are so. Well, I, I'm just saying that <laughs> gross. It's, it's, it's not about getting on an elevator and like literally. Uh, you know, explaining what you do, but just being able to concisely explain what it is that you do. 
so that somebody could understand whether or not they like say yes, no, and hopefully it's not a maybe because if it's a maybe to me, that means they're not going to be able to explain it to somebody else well enough to to hopefully give you referral business. So so you want to make people say yes or no, right? This is for me. This is not for me. And if they say, I don't know, then they might not know how to explain it. Okay, this is where I'm confused. This is this is where I have a problem. Where are you delivering this elevator pitch? Because honestly, I, I am never in front of anybody where I'm like, tell me now, yes, no, or maybe, are we going to do business? That's not... Oh. That's no, not no, no, like no, no, how, no. I mean, I introduce myself. I, I will yeah, introduce your, your myself. Inter, your introduction is, but I I'm guess, is a better way of putting any, it. But I'm not pitching But it's called, called the elevator introduction. It's called the elevator pitch. This is why I'm confused. Mm. Joe, explain mm-hmm. to me. All right. So what, you, you want the definition of an elevator pitch? I want something. <laughs> you, yeah. What, what's your idea of an elevator pitch? Well, well, hold on. Are you what's Googling your, it? I just are told you Googling yes, it, I am, Yes, I am Googling it. But... Uh, no, it, well, it's just a succinct and persuasive sales pitch, right? So, no, it's not, it's not necessarily about a sales pitch, but it's about describing what, all right, it's what's a, your, what's your introduction? What's your 15 second introduction? Right? So, so it's not about necessarily selling something right there. I, I, I wouldn't want anybody listening to this show to have to feel like that. That's how they get their businesses. Well, Joe, Running that- and beating people over the head with the, with, here's my pitch, here's my pitch, here's my pitch. Buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. Uh, for the critic fans out there, but uh, you know, just being able to a- explain what you do in a short form is is extremely valuable, right? Because it's if people don't understand what it is that you do, again, they're not going to be able to say like, "Oh, I get it," and I might want to work with them, or I might not want to work with them. Or again, if they're stuck in this, I'm confused. Well, then they don't understand, and they can't even refer you to some, you know, somebody else to you for your for business because they're just like, I, I don't understand. Do you think though you that know. it's that it's like one one pitch or one phrase that we come up with, and we use that one phrase forever? Or actually, I'll give you my take on it. I think that okay. it's different. For, other, for different people we speak to. I think that you need to know what you do, but then maybe that it is delivered differently to different people. Like I remember last time I came over to the States when we could, you know, catch planes to the other side of the world, <laughs> I was chatting to someone while we were getting a coffee in the middle of the night and she asked what I did just after she told me how she saved up all her holidays Um, you know, from work for all of this time so she could take this trip. So she said to me, what do you do? Well, I didn't. I told her that I help people so that they don't need to work harder to take longer holidays. Like I just match my what I do to what people are telling me. If I went into a into a networking event where there was a heap of corporates, they wouldn't they don't care what I do. (laughs) I, I just think that it needs to be a little bit malleable. Yeah, malleable. (laughs) <laughs> hey, Jen's on my side. My day is well, I, made. No, I, I did, well, I, I'm, nor, nor did I ever say that I wasn't up for the idea that you can have a, a different way of, of saying it or adapting it to the person that's in front of you. My point is, is that sometimes I think we don't necessarily get to the point where we have thought out um, – the the verbiage of what we're trying to explain well enough to mm-hmm. to people so that they and it's in terms that they understand. Here's a, here's a here's a great example, right? Uh, saying that I am a was what was the term? Was it business optimization strategist? Right? Um, that is well, that's a lot of syllables, right? And and it's and it doesn't necessarily really explain the like the what uh, that well, and it doesn't you know get it doesn't get to the core of like of of what the results are of what i uh, provide right so then uh that i think that's more of along the lines of what i'm saying when like how do you explain what you do in if now it's easy right like if you're like oh i'm a carpenter oh well i know what carpenters do right or i i i am a dry cleaning uh comp you know we have a dry cleaner Right, but right? you still need a unique like, value proposition in there, right? Like, uh, and that's exactly what I was going to add there. Oh, my okay. goodness, Jen, we're, right, we're in ahead. the same wavelength today. 
Uh, I mean, you want me to keep? Uh, yeah, I'll just sorry. keep. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm also I'm also distracted by all the jokes that are happening in our chat. I know, I know. I can't even spell Molly a bull. <laughs> I mean, I think these guys want to like come on and be comedians. <laughs> so funny! You're so funny. <laughs> Oh, you didn't have something else to add to, to add on to well, that? Well, I could, yeah. I could. So with a okay. carpenter, rather than be the same as all the other carpenters, you could say that I'm a carpenter and I specialise in kitchen fit-outs or I specialise in whatever it is so that right. people understand what makes you stand out because I think that, and I I hate the word elevator pitch, can I just say. I, I oh, man. Why didn't that. we talk about this last week when we were talking? What the <laughs> because heck? The, because that doesn't make good. it fun, though. <laughs> if we're not arguing, we don't have a show, Joe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know, I know. We, I, I was just talking to Brent about this. and t- Apparently, Brent wants to be a comedian. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, you can have my you can have my spot here if you like, Brent. Have some practice. Joe won't like you very much. <laughs> That's what I'm learning. Um, I can't even remember what I was going to say well, now. You're talking about car- carpenter <laughs> and like specializing in something, and and that makes sense, right? Like having um, ha- you know, being able to explain it in the sense of like, okay, uh, we. You know, we specifically just install windows, right? So we're like a contractor that just installs windows. We don't do all the other stuff. So like we we specialize in just doing that. So like when you want that crazy bow window thing that everyone else is like, yeah, I don't know if I'm interested in you know going through the trouble of putting that together. We're those people, right? We're those people that are going to get that done. Um, something you know very specific and and being able again to be able to explain it. Uh, to to somebody else in in verbiage that they understand. And apparently, Lisa Dawn she gets nervous uh, doing my elevator pitch. And, oh my! And of again, course, but, me but, too. But again, it's not about <laughs> pitching. Well, I I'm not viewing it as as the sales pitch, but the proposition pitch, right? I, I think you you said that. Well, right, that's Jen? the same thing, right? Proposition, sales pitch. I said I. Well. Because you're still like, you're still in that sales mode, right? Where I was like, I think a lot of times people interchange elevator pitch with introduction. I'm pretty sure like I'll go to networking events and be like, go give your 30 second elevator pitch. But really, they just want you to introduce yourself. Mm, Um, You're mm -hmm. not like, you know, you're not, I'm not there to like sell somebody on the spot. Like that's not how it's done. That's not how I'm going to get business. But I want to be authentic and I want people to get to know me. But the problem, okay, here's the problem. I have so many problems with elevator pitches, Joe. I mean, they're canned, right? And there's something about like the canned elevator pitch that just doesn't come across as authentic and genuine. It doesn't open up, you know, for a real conversation and engagement with that person. Um, I don't know. I just, I guess I'm never, I don't feel like I'm ever in a room where I'm using an elevator pitch. And maybe mm. I maybe I'm not in the right rooms. It's you know <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe I um I I, lo- I looked up a uh, an article you're talking about the difference between a uh, elevator pitch versus value proposition versus a positioning statement. Oh, and mm-hmm. I, that, that's right. So there's a, that's a term that hasn't been brought up here yet, mm-hmm. right? The positioning statement. Though I know uh, Sam, you're a big. That's on the words that I statement. use. Yep. Yes. So uh, so there is a difference, and maybe and maybe what I should have been bringing up was uh, uh, maybe a position uh, positioning statement. Um, and, and explaining how you go about doing things, uh, or how, like how you go about, um, what you do. Right. And, 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 uh, what, explaining it to other people. Cause, um, well, look, I'll put it, I'll put an example, I'll, you know, to put myself out there. Like when people Please. ask me like, Oh, what do you do, Joe? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I have this, you know, indie pod you know, podcaster thing going on and, and I have, you know, I help businesses with their, with growing their business and all those things. It's like, it, right. Yeah. I, so I mean, many that's things. How, yeah, right. Well, it's too it's many too, things. Too many yeah. things. Yes. It's too, it is too many things. It is, absolutely is too many things, but being able to, to make that statement in a, um, uh, more of a, as a, to borrow a word, malleable uh, entity of like, okay, so if the depending on where I'm at, who who I at least I think I'm talking to, they might be more interested. But sometimes you don't know what they're interested in because I have 
a, a broader mm-hmm. selection of things that I do, it, it does become hard. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about the elevator pitch or proposition st- statements or, or whatever, however you want to call it. As, as uh, Lisa in the, uh, in the chat said, um, doesn't matter what it is, Sweaty Pit City uh, <laughs> is, is, you know, it's a, it's a thing that um, I think that sometimes we, especially if we have um, small businesses that aren't a traditional like brick and mortar, like again, like I'm a carpenter, I'm a this, I'm a that, uh, doesn't necessarily, like you, like, you got to really give some thought to like yeah. explaining mm-hmm. how you go about doing this stuff. And, and that's, I think that's really my point is, uh, is, is, it, it can get kind of tricky if you're kind of blending so many different worlds together um, for trying to explain to people, this is what I do. And then they can say, yes, I, I like it and I might want to do something with it or no, it's not really for, like, it's not that we had to stop talking. I didn't position, you know, I didn't proposition anything to you as far as like a set, like, oh, you know, you can work with me, you know, $15,000 just right now. Like we, we can work together. It's like, we just met, we, we, we just met 10 seconds ago. What are you, what are you talking about? Um, versus like them not understanding what you do and then not being mm. able to explain it to somebody else to potentially, you know, grow your network long term and have people refer people to you when they are like, oh, you know what, Sam, I think you could work with Jen because you know what, Jen does these two things, three, one, two, three things. And that sounds like in our conversation between you and me, Sam, you, you know, uh, you could benefit working with Jen. Totally Does that agree. make sense? Okay, well, okay. I, I, I do agree. I, I, yeah, yeah. I okay, definitely, I definitely understand that struggle of trying to, you know, condense everything you do <laughs> in less than thirty seconds. So I suggest that you don't. You don't condense everything you do. I think you have to really understand who you're speaking to, your audience, mm. and you really have to understand the value of what you do. Like, what is the the outcome that you produce? for this yeah. audience maybe. I think I think we all need to understand that. I used to try to, in networking groups, be like, yeah, I have a business and I also do these virtual events and a DC podcast. No, that's, that, first of all, nobody cares. Nobody remembers. Nobody's, you know, nobody really cares that, you know, nobody does. And everybody has multiple things going on, right? So yeah, you talk about the one thing that's most relevant in that room at that time, I think. Mm. I think though there's something else that, that we're all thinking is a bad thing. And that's Joe saying that he tries all these different things. I think that there, that's what makes us sweaty, just like Lisa was saying. <laughs> However, if we don't do this and we don't take action and we don't talk about things even when we're confused, we can't get feedback from people that we're around to see what resonates with them or to have them asking questions back. That could be just that little extra bit that you need that makes sense. So I think that a lot of people hold back and don't share what they do because they're afraid of people asking questions. Yep. But I don't think there's any other way to do it. I think that's so true. Yeah, you have to put yourself out there. No, that's never comfortable. No, never comfortable at all. And I think that, and the other thing I wanted to say is you brought up your super duper fancy title there, Joe, that I can't remember what it was. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I can't repeat it. Uh, but I also don't think, a lot of people say your elevator pitch should inspire interest. I think just inspiring confusion isn't the way to inspire interest. Uh, and that's something that people do because when I go, I don't know what that is, nine times out of 10, I won't ask. Mm. interesting jinx <laughs> interesting but that's just just me and we all know how different i am so it might be different for other people that's just me i wonder if we can call the elevator pitch something else like it's 2020 i think it's the the year we can break a few rules like maybe it's the just we associate that term with something that you know makes your armpits sweaty Spammy. as lisa said and I don't know. I, I feel like it kind of falls into that used car salesman sort of mm. like world. Um, I, I mean, I feel like maybe it's a little, it needs a little refresh for 2020. 
Mm. So what? So what? So what? In 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 five minutes, what what should what should we call? <laughs> well, I, I'm not saying we're up for the task, but I, I was going to say I don't know that we can do it this morning. Oh, it's actually no, not even morning there, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. Well, in, in prep- <laughs> it's morning somewhere. <laughs> in preparation for this episode, I came across a blog post that that did talk about sort of reinventing the elevator pitch, but they mainly talked about changing the desired length, which has been 20 to 30 seconds. Um, And they were basing this on research. I'm sure you've all heard that apparently we have our attention spans have shortened to that of uh, a goldfish or maybe even shorter than a goldfish. Mm -hmm. So he was advocating for an eight second elevator pitch. That's hard. That is hard. hard. That's really distilling what you do into about two sentences. Can you do it? Well, I, I think I have. So, <gasps> so, so, it. it's, so, so to go to go from the remember, I can't remember what it is that you said, Joe, ten seconds ago about what I do. So, um, you know, to me, I I I started to distill down like what is what is it like the what of what I do, right? So, going from like business, you know, growth optimization strategist or or something to that effect, and and really just bringing it back to like, well, what is it that I do, right? Well, I work with profit, so profit growth strategist for small and medium businesses. And was that eight seconds? I don't think it was even eight seconds, but no, it but explains. I, but yeah, I actually right? like it. But, Oh, oh, gee, oh my God! She likes something I'm doing. Well, Holy, put, mark I, down! The, I'm marking it on oh, my calendar. Come on, Every, everybody, I'm, everybody, I'm make a mark on serious. your calendar. Yeah, there you go. It's in there. It happened in 2020. Joe had a good idea. <laughs> quote. Mark it down. Ding, Sam. ding, dong. Well, uh, I know why she likes repeat. it better because it's it makes more sense. Your your other title was like I don't even know what he's talking about. This one it's like oh I understand well, what, I know what profit different. is like I know right. what that is. Well, it means is. something different, right? To everybody, when you say growth or or you know business growth, it's like okay, but how, right? Are we talking about more locations? Are we talking about money? Are we talking about what what are, what are we talking about? Team? We don't know. It, it, it means something different to every person. But mm-hmm. when you're talking about mm-hmm. profit, there's the boom because that's effectively and then the. The how uh, I work with those people is through working on their team, their offer, their process, right? The TOP is, uh, you know, what I what I do. So, um, but that doesn't explain. Like that's too long of an explanation for just like, hey, mm-hmm. like I I work with people to grow their profit. Mm. I like it. So yeah, like right? it. so like ding ding, how, hooray! I mean, I, I literally <laughs> mark it on my calendar here. <laughs> that's joe had a good idea now maybe i should i should more be more i should write in some more details to that so i actually remember what joe idea she we were talking about a year from now when it comes back up we i know you, you you'll remember it joe you'll repeat it back to me in 20 years hey remember that day that, on business geeks oh, 20 years. Oh. that one time oh, um, there's a lot going on in the chat guys there's so there much is. Um, uh so uh, Ross says, uh, elevator pitches seem abrupt. You haven't hardly said hello to someone, See? and all of a sudden you're telling them about your business work skills. So, so we're like, we're um, did he? I mean, you probably didn't. I didn't either. Look where the elevator pitch actually comes from. Like, yes. where did that? Was, oh, you did. Oh, yeah, dang. came from uh, Hollywood Studios when they'd have yep. to pitch movie ideas um, quickly to potential producers in literally an elevator. Yes. Ah. So it's not about sell. I mean, you are sell like you are selling an idea, but but you're not selling like something right there. Like buy my used car, right? Like what, like I was just trying to use the elevator. Like what are you talking about? Mm. Um, you know, a, it was taking advantage of the captive audience, right? And yes. and trying to inspire interest in their movie idea. So, I mean, it, it's a cool origin story. I can see how it translated over time to all sorts of businesses. And then we ruined it because that's what we do. We can't have those uh-huh. things. That, that, we ru- that's we ruin everything. Yeah. <laughs> I think if someone, if someone gave me an elevator pitch and I didn't know who they were, I would be like pushing the buttons to get out really fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the stairs. Yeah. 46 floors up still. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I, and it was like day anyway. It's, it's, it's going to, everyone, everyone's winning here. <laughs> All right. Lisa has some ideas here, Joe. How about a niche intro? Well, um, that would well. Then we have the problem of do we say niche, niche. or niche? 
Taste. Oh no! I'm already now. I'm nervous could, again. Well, we could do a whole show around that. Uh, it, no, no, it's pretty easy. Niche. <laughs> niche. <laughs> niche. Niche. It's, it's like you're baking a quiche. Uh, what? What? what should say? Uh, how do you say aluminum? Aluminium. Yes, I, I knew you were going to do that. So many letters. <laughs> so many letters. <laughs> oh, um, uh, we could keep going there. <laughs> or how about yeah. elevator pitch becomes equals niche welcome. <laughs> I mean, niche. I'm ready to call it Fred at this point. But um, Niche like itch. Did you guys know there's a <laughs> national elevator pitch championship? <gasps> I mean, I'm not surprised, but wow. no, I did not know that. Could you imagine how how nervous that would be sitting even in the audience? Oh, oh yeah. Some wow. Nervous energy going on there. Yeah, yeah. totally. Uh, is that the cow one that you were talking about? The cow poly? I, there, oh, you know what? There's slam? more than one, but people who win these, they they actually um, you know get a lot of mileage out of it. It seems in terms of being speakers and right authors and that sort of thing. Mm. I was just surprised that there was a contest for such a thing, but then I was like, "Well, I shouldn't be surprised." Uh, yeah, I mean, there's like shark type, shark tank esque type stuff going on all over the place. Uh, well, see, in an environment like Shark Tank, I'm like, yes, you need you mm. need an elevator pitch because you're actually there with the purpose of trying to sell your product or at least get investor money. So, but I think that a lot of us aren't in that kind of room on a regular basis <laughs> but so that's why no. i'm like the elevator pitch to me feels very very limited in terms of its practicality hmm. i think i think what i want to leave this conversation with is you do need to be able to explain clearly what you do but it's not going to be the same all the time yes right <clears throat> and it's not the sales pitch right and that's right. and i think that's the important thing is explaining mm -hmm. and and even in the, the elevator pitch like you're explaining an idea within 15 seconds right you're not saying like I'm going to sell you this idea and it's going to cost you $20 million and oh and now I have I now I have 7 seconds left to explain the idea. <laughs> Stop the clock. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Stop the just hit the emergency button and just uh make it stop. Um <sighs> So yeah, so I think uh, you know, I, I, and and obviously, the more you do it, the more it gets easier to explain. But I think if you take some time to really boil down what it is that you do, um, and and really like focus it into as few words as possible that that are as clear as possible to anyone that you're explaining it to, it's it, you're, you're gonna you're gonna have a good time. You're gonna have a good time. Oh well, I hope so. And if you want to submit your video to our elevator pitch contest where can they send it joe <laughs> question is it questions <laughs> questions at uh businessgeekspodcast.com i, I mean, know he's gonna enter brent because he wants that elevator themed trophy the elevator he's, trophy he's going all in yeah <laughs> Take it to the top, Brent. Take it to the top. <laughs> Straight to the penthouse. Yeah. Where all the winners hang out with their pitch trophies. Yeah, I'll uh, be in the basement. They... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so anyway, uh, Jen, you have a, a grind my gears this week. Yes, of course. Of course you do. Is and anybody I, else? And, and, and is it just I, I was like, going to say it's no, Jen. No, it's I, Jen. I, I, think, I think it's just you. I think you got the spotlight, but I'm I'm excited because I can probably pile onto this one for you. Okay. With you. Not for you, with you. This is a story of my landscaping lady. And I say lady because I don't think there is many landscape business owners that are women as men. So when I found this landscaping company, I was so happy to support the small business. And I adore her, and I adore the work that they do. They do great work. Here's the deal. It is so hard to pay them because every other time I enlist their services, they are either not taking credit cards, they don't have any sort of automated, you can't pay online, you've got to call her personally at home during dinner and give the credit card over the phone. Now she's not taking credit cards and for the foreseeable future she's willing to drive to my house to pick up a check it's fine but well, she'll take a check she'll take a check mm. or cash but what i'm saying is who does business this way it is so easy to automate online payments she doesn't want to pay credit card fees she says 
Yes. Oh my oh god. My what you pay, what she pay, you know she drives a big vehicle. You know these Seriously. landscaping vehicles are are gas guzzlers. She drives her gas guzzler to my house to pick up an $80 check rather than pay what a dollar and some change and a credit card fee. She ate up that much in gas driving over not to mention the value of her time when she could there's so many ways to to collect money easily and to make it frictionless for your customer. So now, as much as I love her, I'm actually considering going with another landscaping company because it's supposed to be a convenience, the landscaping company, right? It's supposed to be, you know, take some of the the yard work off my plate so I'm not spending all weekend in the yard when I'm not like that. I'm not that person that loves like gardening, you know, nonstop. So it's a convenient service and it's now inconvenient. Why make it hard for you? If there's one mm-hmm. business lesson I can pass on in this episode is make it easy for people to pay you. I make could not it agree more. easy, easy, mm-hmm. easy, easy. Yep. I could not agree more, Jen. Could not this agree breaks more. Breaks my business heart. It breaks my small business heart when I can't do business with somebody I adore because they make bi- paying them so hard. Mm. Uh, well, you know, tech technology is uh, is hard. I don't know what to tell you. It's not. <laughs> oh no, just charge fifty one dollars and thirty four cents and take the card. Take yeah. the card. <laughs> it's a cost of doing business. Factor it into your prices. It is also a business deduction for you. Those those fees. So mm-hmm. this is you know this is cutting off your nose to spite your face. Mm-hmm. Period. You know, like yeah, we like to manage all. You know, we have everything on like. You know, with our family, we use uh, Amex for everything just because it, it's great for categorizing expenses. We get kickbacks, you know, we paid off every month. So we just, all of our expenses go through that one that one funnel. It's just easier for us to track everything and budget. Um, so for her to like to get in the, <laughs> you know, ruin our, our method of like our finances <laughs> and making it difficult, it's really frustrating. Mm. Really frustrating. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it is. It sounds like a first world problem, but I'll tell you, my, my landscaper is the same way. Uh, and and d- doesn't necessarily want to take checks either. It's it's cash. Wow. Which, which is which is okay when when the bill isn't like you know once it gets to a certain point amount of money it starts. I've to got a new up, elevator pitch. I've got a new elevator pitch. I'm going to help landscapers build profitable businesses. I, I, that's so that's so niche, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> niche. Can I can I say something, can, Joe? Can I say something about yes. your landscaper who only takes cash? Okay, I run yes. into this too. Where, you I'm know, sure you uh, particularly with like people that, you know, provide some sort of service to your home where they want to take cash. OK, yes, this is amateur hour business ownership. OK, when you're only t- <laughs> because you think what you're getting one over on the government, you know, because you're not going to have to pay taxes because it's under the table. OK, well, what about when you want to buy a house or a car and you can't prove your income? And by the way, you live in a country that provides services to you. You need to pay your taxes. You know, tax dodge, I'm not telling you to pay more than your fair share. Get a good accountant, you know, that'll, you know, understands your taxes and so you don't have to pay like more than you should. But to try to dodge, you know, making tax, you know, paying taxes, I mean, that is a, that's, that's a, a fast track to lose your town. Sorry, well, yeah, I, I mean, said it. Well, the, well, the yeah, well, I, absolutely. Well, there was a, a, a famous uh, thing that went down in Ocean City, New Jersey, where one of the, the, the most famous pizza pop shop there uh, was not paying taxes and uh, it, it, it turned into a multi million dollar problem. See? For a yeah. Pizza shop. Wow. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Okay, yeah. that was two rants. That was two rants. I'm so sorry. I over ranted. <laughs> okay. I okay. over ranted. It's not over. It's not, it's not over ranting. You know why? Because um, I I don't have somebody that that's going to take my lunch money this week, uh, but Jen apparently you do. So yeah. I'm I'm more than willing to 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 defer to you. Okay. Well, I might need help in pronouncing. It's the this business is called the Art of Sucre Sucre, Sucre which Sucre, I think is yeah. is French for sugar. French for sugar. Yep. They, oh, yep. see. Okay, I, I got that part right. So <laughs> the reason I brought this uh, company up, it's a small one woman show um, out of Ohio. And I am so impressed with her because what she has done is she's reinvented a simple candy that has been around forever that nobody's ever done anything differently with, the cotton candy. 
And now this, her company, they do all sorts of cool flavors and they have been uh, hired by celebrities to do their weddings and their birthday parties because they have taken cotton candy to the next level. They have a cotton candy burrito that's filled with candy. They have, I think I mentioned crazy flavors. They even have a candy, a cotton candy bomb that when you drop it in champagne, or sparkling water, it like explodes into like um, glitter and confetti um, and makes just this whole show. So she is winning on Instagram. Uh, she is winning in life. Um, her biggest challenge right now is figuring out how to, uh, to ship cotton candy because it's very vulnerable to um, like moisture. So they're working really hard to be able to, to um, be able to ship this, their products. I'll be the first in line to order. I think these are going to make great customer appreciation gifts, just, you know, fun, unexpected, you know, treats, um, I don't know. I just, I love this idea so much that she's sort of reinvented, co- reinvented cotton candy. Just such a great example mm. of a small business doing their thing. And her they copy to- on her website is so cool. It's so authentic. Yeah. I, it, the only thing that's missing is a video of of what you just explained the the explosion thing. Yes. Like, that should be like right here, like right when I, I think get to so. the homepage. Like. I think so. I think they're you know they probably have been a little bit um, bombarded uh, by inquiries because they have worked with celebrities now, um, and a lot of people want this product, but they're like, we can't ship it yet. We're trying mm. to figure it out. But how cool! How cool! Yeah, I, very I, I, cool. I see good is things the in the future. Candy special though, like is it's, it? Oh, yes. it was or is it just champagne. The way they're delivering it in, champagne yeah, but, flavored. I was in. Oh, oh, oh is that one of the? There's I lots of different it. flavors. Mm. It comes in jars. Uh, okay. There's all sorts of things. Uh, huh. it, it's very special, unique colors and flavors for memorable moments. I mean, this is the bomb. dot com. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. How cool. All right, cool. Okay, that's, well, I don't, I I don't mean, feel like I don't feel like you are feeling this product, Joe. That's okay. That's okay. I, no, no, no. I, 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 I see this I'm at Ava's birthday party. Fan. Ava's birthday party. Uh, this yeah. Could be. <laughs> yes, yes. When we can have people at the house again like that. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, when when the time is right. But look at all the flavors. Yeah. Merlot. Hello, Merlot. <laughs> I mean, orange bourbon, cotton candy. I'm here for it. Let's that's go. Mm-hmm. Cheesecake. Speaking of the chocolate cheesecake, there was um I don't know did either of you see the the Facebook post that I I shared with about the cheesecake? Oh, is that the cheesecake in the apple? And then apple, yes. Oh my god, uh, it so, looked so, amazing. But I was like, so get rid of the I'm apple, just give me the cheesecake. Here. Yeah, right. Did yeah, I mean, it doesn't even have to be apple. Uh, <laughs> the apple makes it too healthy. I don't I don't know. I just... Yeah, yeah. But they looked so good. <laughs> oh, look, look, look at these things. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's right. What what is, what, is, what what is this and where do I get it? Uh, so it's in uh, what was it, what state was it Washington was it, was it Washington State? Uh, oh no oh Northwest Indy Indiana. Wow so wow yeah it says the apple. I I don't understand why I put it in an apple other than to give it the form like yeah it's like it's like an, an instant bowl. Yeah I, I love it. This is the kind of thing. Have you ever guys ever dreamed of this of? Going on a diet, but like getting 10 pounds underweight, it's just so you could eat stuff like this <laughs> guilt free, like have 10 pounds to gain. I mean, this is like my, I've had this dream for years. I've never accomplished it. But if you ever no. wanted to do this, am I alone on that? I just want to be 10 pounds underweight. No, just you're so not. I- you're not. I did it uh, back in, I don't know, it was probably like 12 years ago or something like that. I would, I would get so low that I actually would eat. Eat extra, your way back to health. Like, so yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at her. She's like, so yeah, thin. Yeah. You know, like, you you know, women are, like, kind of catty. But, and, like, you know, if you, I, and you, I know you've been around women where they see another skinny woman and, like, eat a cookie. I'm like, I want to be that girl that's, like, a little, like, waist-like. Like, eat a well, cookie. Yeah, okay. I'll take it. I'll take you don't, it. <laughs> if, if you say so. You don't have to twist my arm. <laughs> you know. Oh, this is so, this it does look so good, though. Oh, um, it looks so good. Yeah, so okay, that's who's getting my lunch money this okay, week. Okay, uh, right. is, is a company out uh, in, in uh, and oh, and they're only eight dollars. Oh, I'd pay twenty. That's it. I'd pay twenty. Yeah, right. Well, you, that's what I was saying to Melissa. I was like, if this was in New York, this is easily like twenty bucks, tw- twenty to twenty-five mm, yeah. bucks. Like, mm. I mean, you put it on like the boardwalk or something. Like, you're, you're getting at least like 
15 to, to 20 bucks for that, you know, oh my easily. God. Joe, that comment reminds me of something you said to me last week. And I want to, I want to put it out there. I want to put your statement out okay. there to oh see, boy. to see what, I don't know what I said. You know, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing bad, but I, I, but it got me thinking and I wanted to see if other people like felt this way. All right. So what Joe said to me was the hundred dollar bill is the new $20 bill. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Well, okay. Yeah. I don't, yeah. That, I don't want to take that back. That, yeah. No, no, it's not bad. But the hundred dollar <laughs> bill is the new $20 bill. Agree or disagree. I'm putting it out there. Yeah, I don't know what the equivalent is in Australians. Uh, yeah, I I'm sorry, dollars. Sam. I don't have the the AUDs. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the fifty in Australia. Maybe I'm just making that up. Mm. Any Australians want to help me here? Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think the point is, is that we now spend a hundred dollars as easily as we used to spend twenty dollars. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if I spend a hundred dollars as easily as I spend twenty dollars. I really don't. Yeah, that's but why I, I'm thinking I, the fifty. I understood where you were going. Good mm. morning, Anita. Uh, Hi. Yeah. Isn't it? It's. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you're right. Yep. <laughs> Is it? Well, it, it's um. It, you know, it's just like anytime you go outside the house, it ends up being like a hundred dollar a day. I, I agree with that. Like, I like do without agree even with that. like without even trying. Like it, you know, you spend twenty bucks here, twenty bucks there. You fill you know your gas tank up, and yep. next thing you know, it's it's like you spend a hundred bucks without even trying. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, billionaires! Wow, billionaires. We billionaires. All billionaires I, I was not even aware that I was. <laughs> I only can say you're all billionaires here. Well, um, Anita, I, I hope you're our accountant. Yeah. <laughs> not, I really do. I, I hope you're the accountant I've never never met. Um, I'll say the fifty dollars, Samantha. Okay. The canary uh, is the new lobster. The new bring, lobster. bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah. Bring it on. The canary is the new lobster. Oh, my goodness. I love it. The hedgehog is the new hamster. What? Uh, <laughs> oh, what? You know, we could be here all day with these, but. Yes. But we do We do need to wrap these uh, this up, uh, up. Uh, here on yeah. the Business Geeks podcast. Uh, we will be back next week, uh, same time at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Tuesday, uh, 7 a.m. Or no, it's 8 a.m. Aust- I wasn't looking at the actual it's thing. It's all good. Yeah, 8 a- I just Tuesday, thought I'd 8 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, if you have enjoyed this episode, please share it with the business geeks, uh, the business geek in your life, and uh, send your questions and suggestions uh, to questions at businessgeekspodcast.com. For Sam and Jen, I'm Super Joe Pardo. Have a great week, everyone. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.